I'd like to hear from you, Chris, how you define customer engagement, because generally in the social media world, in the podcasting digital media world, we think of engagement as someone liked my post or they left a comment. Maybe they shared it on their story or something like that. Is that what you mean by engagement with your consumers? Or are you talking about something a little bit more abstract, a little bit more nuanced? Yeah, I mean, one of our problems is that the definition of engagement turns into something that like PhD statisticians start to understand. So it's not, <laughs> it's too nuanced for the everyday man. I mean, what you mentioned are indicators of engagement, but at the end of the day, the way that you actually measure engagement, and it's actually one of the fights that we have, is that people have this false sense of security that net promoter score is the best indicator of engagement, and it's not. It's the best indi It's an indicator of satisfaction, but uh, in its simplicity, where people just want things to be easy, asking one question has sort of trumped all of the real nuance of engagement. But engagement deals with the emotional connection that people feel for your category in relation to how well you're meeting their expectations versus the competitive alternatives. So that's a mouthful, right? But it starts to, you start to break that down and you start to look at something about, you know, my expectations for an e-commerce platform is different than my grocery store, is different than my music, you know, app, which is different than my childcare provider. Right. So you can't do blanket levels of engagement. Now, one of the challenges we have is when people like Amazon make it so easy then that raises expectations for all of the categories, right? So you look at somebody like a Carvana now that says, like, why, why does buying a car have to be so distasteful when buying a mattress on Amazon is so easy? So people, <laughs> one category can certainly shift people's expectations across different categories. But then you get into this idea of in comparison to the competitive set, right? So um, I may have certain hopes or expectations, but all I need you to do is be better than the next best alternative. Because if you're not, I'm just going to go with the cheapest or the easiest. And everybody mm -hmm. has to make a decision. How are you going to compete? You've really only, in my mind, you only have four choices. You can be the cheapest, you can be the most convenient, you can be the most innovative, or you can be the most cult-like. And all of them have pros and cons, and all of them have a discrete playbook with which, you know, with which you can proceed. I think cheapest and most convenient is a fool's errand unless you're Walmart or Amazon or have some sort of operational or scale advantage. Probably most of your listeners don't, right? Particularly the newer, smaller you are, that you're bringing a knife to a gunfight right. if you're trying to be the cheapest or the most operationally efficient. Now, you could become the most innovative. That's what Tesla did. I mean, Tesla dethroned the automotive industry by just bringing something to the market that nobody had ever seen before. But innovation is hard. Innovation, you know, BlackBerry was the most innovative company 10 years ago, and they're gone today. And so you have to be careful to know that innovation is a huge investment in R&D or just be the most cult-like, which means I'm going to cater to my tribe of customers better than anybody else. I find that one the most rewarding and oftentimes the path of least resistance. Thanks for watching Mark Svant Media. Here we're going to help you create a better content in less time and turn that attention into income. If you love this video, you're going to love these videos here. Click the one. Me and my team specially selected this just for you. Click the link. Check out the video. I'll catch you here next time on Mark Svant Media.